It's the end of the year, and with that being said, gravel is pretty much here to stay. I've been lucky enough to go to many of the gravel events this year, and here's my take on some things. We're gonna be looking at what the sport has been up to, where it's going, and how it's changing. Stay with us. One of the appeals of gravel is that it's just much more safer compared to other types of cycling such as road cycling, crit racing, and even some downhill mountain biking. It's safer for the masses and that means that more people are going to get into it. With gravel events, those things are starting to take off and the reason why is people feel a need to be a part of something. For the most part, Gravel cycling and cycling in general is just a solitary sport. You mostly do it alone with the occasional group ride on the weekends. And then you sign up and enter one or two big events for the year. And then in those events, you pretty much build your entire training plan around. Some people do it for competitive reasons and other people do it to complete it. Now, those people who are doing it for competitive reasons seem to be getting all the attention. And with Lifetime getting in the mix, throwing a lot of money to it, there's more and more people elevating that level of competition. For the people that are just completing it, that is also an important event. But that number of people who complete these events rather than compete in those events are much greater. Think Boston Marathon. Maybe there's 20 people at Boston Marathon who can win it, but there are thousands of people just going to try and finish it or give it its personal best. I like to compare gravel cycling the way it is today with modern day surfing, where you have most people who don't follow the world tour events, maybe they know who Kelly Slater is, but for the most part, the people that surf most of the time have never entered a surf competition and never will, and pretty much surf after work or on the weekends for fun. I used to do the same thing, and I never thought once of entering a surf competition. Now with gravel, most people who do gravel never sign up for a race. And with this talk of the spirit of gravel, a lot of people feel that they need to do something great within the sport to make that spirit of gravel count. Gravel cycling is pretty much marketed to someone who wants freedom, individualism, and the ability to travel where they normally wouldn't go on their road bikes. That being said, a lot of the pros build a lifestyle around selling that image. Pros often have their own custom vans, their own personal sponsors. They make adventure look accessible and easy, but at the same time, the cost to get into those things is very, very, very expensive. Most average people who compete in gravel events don't do 20 events a year like some of the pros. Maybe they just do one event and then they build their entire year around that. Unbound sells out very quick, as does many other gravel races. And part of that reason is because it is billed as an adventurous type of experience, something that you can relate to even if you're not a pro. And the pros that do it, it's part of the larger Lifetime series, which has thrown thousands of dollars into the event and caused, for better or worse, a lot of people to pay attention to the sport. The rules of gravel are still unwritten, and as a result, there's a lot more people that are flocking to gravel, not just for the cycling part, but for the social aspect as well. A lot of people see diversity and inclusion in gravel that they normally wouldn't see in other aspects of the sport. Most people who get into gravel get into it via other sports. For example, Peter Stetna and Kiel Reinen came in from the World Tour and realized they wanted to get more into gravel. And a lot of people are starting to realize that there are much more alternatives to going pro on the road or in Europe. A lot of people go to gravel just because it's such an untapped market, yet it is extremely difficult to do. A lot of the newer people in gravel are going directly into it without even thinking about trying to secure a contract in any of the other disciplines. Young pros like Ian Lopez San Ramon maybe 10 years ago would have tried to go to Europe and succeed there, but is realizing that he, just out of high school, can get right into gravel and be somewhat of a threat. The fun and camaraderie of the sport are the things that make it appealing. And a lot of people go to these events to connect with other cyclists that normally they wouldn't hang out with. A lot of events too feature an outdoor, casual, relaxed atmosphere filled with plenty of food and beer at the end rather than going home immediately and then getting ready for the next race. These are more cycling parties with cycling involved, being in the outdoors, and that brings more people into the sport. 
I'm sure there are a lot of people that will never compete in a gravel race and never even go to a gravel event, but day in and day out, on the weekends, they hang out with their friends and they go on their own gravel adventure. They are what you would call the purists. Who knows how many of those are made up of the bulk of the sport compared to those who compete. However, with gravel getting bigger and bigger and marketing initiatives from big brands, trying to market everything from shoes to clothing to casual wear, to get people into the lifestyle of the sport makes the people who are already in the sport seem a little bit turned off by that. And I get that. But the reality is, as gravel starts to grow, so does the lifestyle. And just getting to an event is a hard thing. Entry fees, gas, plane tickets, hotels, all add up. And if that means someone can only do one event per year compared to the many that the pros do, that's still something that they're speaking to. It used to be when you're racing regularly or going to events during this calendar year, you would do many of those. But right now, a lot of people stick to local events and then maybe save up to do a destination event. In the new year, gravel cycling is billed to be one of the biggest disciplines within the sport. And with USA Cycling and the UCI very much paying attention and trying to structure their own events, there's no escaping it. You also see world tour riders coming to the United States to do show up events, which help the sport, but as we see more and more people getting into gravel, they are coming in looking to take gravel on full time, not just a side discipline. So next year for 2023, there may be more events. The calendar may be longer. We may see higher rates of attrition. A lot of people don't love the lifetime calendar of events and just aren't able to do them. In fact, this year, a few people dropped out for very legitimate reasons. And a lot of people felt that it was uncompetitive with the drawn out calendar, the extended time training. The people who are at the very top are in it to solidify their status within the sport, not to mention receive a fairly decent paycheck. Obviously, Lifetime is a game changer, and who knows what other sponsors will come into the sport. Brands want people to not only do the sport, but they wanna have them participate in the sport in terms of their dollars and cents. And if that means they need to market and make things that appeal to the average customer who pay full retail, then they're gonna do it. And while some people scoff at the events for becoming too big, there's plenty of smaller and newer events that are propping up. I've experienced two this year of note, both Foco Fondo in Fort Collins, Colorado, which really brings a fun party type atmosphere. And yes, if you wanna go hard, you can, but if you want to go slow and ride with your friends, you can do that as well. The other one is Mammoth Tough. It was two years in the making and it was such a great atmosphere. A lot of people feel that bike events are just races. That's not necessarily true. You can ride hard, you can ride easy, but at the same time, everybody is enduring the same type of experience. So for every massive gravel race that is selling out in seconds, there's a new gravel event, much smaller, popping up. What I learned from going to these events and hanging out at the very, very top of the sport with some of the best riders in the world is they're that not much different from you and me. They struggle, they train, they have lives outside of the sport, and they're trying to do the best they can, making a living at something where the rules are pretty much unwritten. You have new riders coming into the sport and the riders are getting younger and younger, and also the people that are staying in the sport of gravel and seeing the appeal that it's safer, more fun, more inclusive, makes it a better thing. What kind of gravel cyclist are you? Do you go to events? Do you even compete or race? And if not, why not? I get the appeal, but do you really think that this sport is changing that quickly? Essentially, we're still riding on mixed surfaces, maybe experimenting with different equipment choices, but in the end, it's you out in nature having fun. And that is really the point. When you throw money into the mix, that changes things, both for better and worse. Until next time, this is Brian saying stay Vela worthy.